How are you guys doing? Welcome. Hey, this episode is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Willie's going to be here. As you guys know, he is the, the, the new co-host for the show. We're going to we, actually, I'm going to say new. It's not like I had another one, but it's no big deal. I'm, I'm back at it. I'm excited. This was going to be a little bit different video. You guys are used to us talking strictly about Ukraine and what's going on. We're trying to change things up a tad bit. If you guys want to check us out over on all your podcasts that work, most, for the most part, everything's going to be in English now. It's just going to be me and him talking. It's not going to be like a bunch of random Russian propaganda stuff at all times. It's going to be me and another guy that speaks English. So if you want to throw us on inside of your car, this is your best bet to do it. Just go over to any podcast network. I'll throw it inside the, the description below. Just download it. Listen to them. I, I don't care if you're on Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, wherever you listen to it. Just go listen to Speak the Truth. and you'll, you'll be able to listen to us in the car as you're driving or on YouTube. I don't really care what it is. Whatever it is. doesn't really matter. Now, today's video is going to be a little bit different. Or episode, I guess you would say. We're going to be talking about, well, for one, I, I just got to point out this mic. Um, I brought one of my other mics up to the warehouse yesterday left it up there so we're using one of willie's mics which i'm not gonna lie if you can shove that thing down his throat i will i will absolutely take him on a date there's no <laughs> doubt i am going to take willie on a, if, he, if you could if we're going somewhere nice mate it might be an option <laughs> if that thing he can if it ends up down your esophagus it's going to be an amazing day and your girlfriend's also going to think twice about dating you so oh, sure that. trust me she's thought way more than twice about <laughs> <laughs> well, today is going to be a little different. So this is not a roast session, nothing like that. He spent a little bit of time in Ukraine with Charles as well. And he, well, I guess he's ran across some, some individuals. I've ran across a few myself that I've had interviewed on this, this show. And the one in particular we'll talk about here in a little bit, but we're we'll going to kick it off. We're going to talk about frauds of Ukraine and frauds of the war in general. There's a lot of what I want to call LARPing that has been going on. I, I don't want to say anything. I mean, I didn't go over there and play play war. I've already done it one time. I, did, oh, I wanted to go this last time, but I'm actually kind of like, I don't know. I, I kind of wish I, I did for at least a couple months, but whatever, it doesn't really matter. I want to hear about some of your LARPer stories that you absolutely 100% know about yeah. to be true. There's a lot of what we call them as on fictional characters of the war as these guys were just like oh, out there who were dressed in all the camouflage, posting all the Instagram stories, but everyone in like the AO or in the area was like, you're not doing anything. Like you're hanging out in a hotel somewhere, you're dressed in your cam, you're taking some photos, taking an E with an AK, but you're not there fighting. You're just some um, Westerner trying to get some like Instagram followers. And they're in the it really tapered off, I guess, as the popularity of the war online tapered off. It did yes. taper, but in the beginning, man, these guys were everywhere. Like, don't get me wrong, there are people like Westerners have gone across and done some incredible work and have laid down their life for the country, absolutely. But there's a lot of these guys who everyone thinks are flogs who are there for Instagram photos and some bullshit war stories and legitimately going to the strip club that's open in Kiev. See, yeah. I don't, I don't know anything about those ones. Yeah, I, I know, but I'm going to talk to your mind here in a little bit. Mm. I'm, I, want, I want to hear some of your like. So the the best one I have was this group, and I won't I won't name names because they're really good guys in this group too. But this guy who was, you know, God, what'd you do? You know, I was in the navy, and the whole time's implying that he was a seal. Like I was did some you know special operations work in the navy, blah blah blah. And I'm like, oh, this guy seems pretty legit. But as soon as myself, you know, ex-army, as soon as I saw his body armor set up, I was like, that's interesting. Like, it, mm, that seems like someone who's put body, together, body armor together who thinks that looks cool. I'm like, that doesn't make much sense, but, but whatever. Like, benefit of the doubt, this guy wouldn't bullshit to me. And I spoke to some other guys who I knew were legit. And they're like, oh, that bloke. Like, what is he actually saying to you? And we're trying to figure it out. And I was like, to him, like what team are you on? He's like, oh, yeah, three and five. And then the guy next to me in the car is like, he told me he was two and four. And it sort of all was coming unraveled. Oh. But I thought they had some decent um, sort of access down to some frontline areas. So I was like, I'll roll with these, with these guys, whatever. And some of them were good guys. And we rolled down and they'd raised hundreds, if not thousands, I'm sorry, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in the beginning because there was a lot of people donating. And people don't think that people will take advantage of a situation like this. Of course they do. There's a lot of cancer charities, a lot of kids' charities, a lot of NGOs that are absolutely just full of shit raising money. And we rolled down with them and realistically I did a video, filmed a bit, and nothing happened until we're in the car on the way home. And my mate, ex-Canadian um, Mechanized Infantry, he's like, what's happened to me? He's like, you, you all good? And I'm like, yeah, like, why? He's like, no, nah, no, nah. like, you guys all together, 
what's going on? And I'm like, man, I'm like, we're fine. Like, he's like, I was like, what all happened? He's like, bullshit. What do you mean nothing happened? And I'm like, what? And he's like, go check the Instagram of these guys who are in the car with you. Go on the Instagram. And this dude, man, I'm not bullshitting you. Like holding a puppy, taking a knee behind a tree, like evacuating some locals from this area. And I'm like, what the fuck? And he was like <clears throat> messaging my other mate being like, yeah, we're in this contact. We got caught out and we're in nothing, man. But it's just these guys, you know, full of shit. Like it wasn't that it was a very, like I won't get it wrong. It was a fairly dangerous spot we're in, but it wasn't this, you know, running through fire, saving Prophet Ryan on the beach sort of action at all. And these guys are posting like that, raising heaps of money. And, you know, you'll go to Kiev. You can go there right now and you'll see guys getting around in full, full multicams with, you know, a yellow band on, a blue band on, who they're just there and will go to the pub like that. And then later on we'll go to whatever the strip clubs there is called and you'll be like, what the, like, what are you guys doing? And there's a lot of these, a lot of these fictional characters getting around who, you know, they're part of some group who they're there just to look cool and get. get I, I have, I have met some really, what I, I have met actual pipe hitters. Oh shit. Yeah, I have of met there are. actual pipe hitters, but I've met pipe hitters that have been next to guys who, which I'm going to talk about here in a minute. I knew at the time instantly lights went off fraud. Like it's legitimately, tell. if you've been like bam, ex-military, like fraud, you are fraud, fraud. You fraud. can tell and straight I, away. I'm not going to name any names of some of the pipe hitters I hit. I, I'm going to tell them right now. I don't know if the gentleman in, in, in charge of this, this organization, he was always a really nice guy. I don't think he was, um, I don't think he had a like slime ball type mentality. I don't think he was. But the one that's coming out right now is, it's, it's the whole James Vasquez things. And I've actually had this guy on the show and I have never went in the detail as to why I never really brought him back onto the show. Um, he did reach out, um, him and Rip both reached out to actually get back onto the show. And I, I never even responded to either one of them because my light bulb went off instantly uh, after after those videos went live and, and I had more conversation with them. I was just like, this, this ain't it. I, I just, I just, I can't, I can't really get involved. And I, you know what's crazy? I even, I even, this is at the very beginning of the war. I was like, you know what? They seem real religious, uh, not religious, real uh, legitimate, you know, real legitimate. They got a lot of stuff going on. They're actually sending some over. I gave them five grand myself. So here you go, take some money, you know? We're making money, or at the time, we were making anything off. The, remember, we went like, what, six or seven months or eight months, and I was just eating this entire cost of this thing. I was like, you know what, take five, here's five grand, take it. And I think they were trying to raise money for, like, uh, vest and nods or helmets or something. I was like, yeah, that's, that's easy money to, to just go give to that. But come to find out, I mean, I I got more stuff myself sent over to guys in, in like, two seconds and than I think whatever happened there. But that went with the five grand I gave. But what's going on with that is, is, is actually – Somewhat kind of sickening. So I, I met the guy I don't know, about a year ago. Or so um, some of the stuff he told me in my truck. I don't want to put this. This was actually this was this was after, wasn't it, Charles? This was this was after. Yeah, this was after we had done the filming. He came back in, or we went. Oh yeah, no, no. He came in and filmed. He went down and shot hogs. And I was I kept telling you, I was very confused on yeah. um, some of the stories he was telling me. It made no sense whatsoever. Mm. Didn't you say his drills on? Weapons were poor too. Oh yeah, very poor. Which like very, AR platform, I'm assuming you're shooting. Zombie. And if you're very US poor. US anything, it's AR stuff. It's very so. poor. But some of the stuff that he had told me kicked off some red flags and the video's already been live. So I mean, we're going to go and take him down and be like, oh, hold on, this guy, I'm not going to, I had my my suspicions inside my, my head and I wasn't going to come out and just be like, all right, roast him. This is not the kind of guy, I'm not going to come out and publicly yeah. and do that. But now that all the stuff's starting to filter, I'm like, okay, now I feel comfortable doing it. Not roasting him, but just being honest about him. So... He showed up, he told a story, and a lot of his story, we, that the first day he actually, we had to redo it. We redid it, right, the next day? Yeah, we had to redo it the next day. So the first one they saw that went live actually wasn't the real one. It was, the first one was, or, first one was not even made the cut. We had to go back and redo it. Because um, there was a lot of stuff that was just being said, and I was just like, I'm very confused. And I, and I had just met the guy, and mm. he literally drank like a half, like I gave him, what was it? And he drank like a, almost a half a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> Like, it was the craziest thing ever. And I said, okay, well, that's fine. Maybe, you know, he just came back. You know, when I when I came back from Afghanistan, I had to decompress. I drank some alcohol, too. It wasn't that big of a deal. I said, all right, it's cool. We'll redo it tomorrow. And we did. We did it the next day. It wasn't that big of a deal. It went smooth. It went a lot smoother. But when he was telling some of the stories, like, what, in my mind, I, I, 
when, when I re recount like some of the, the stuff I went through like in Afghanistan for those the, the nine months and 12 months in Iraq was like nothing but Afghanistan was like really 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 it was like the wild west it really was it was a lot of fun for me it was but a lot of the stuff that he was saying made nothing was really aligning like the, the stories weren't really like coming together like to fruition like nothing was really like making a lot of sense there was no detail, there was not no detail. like it was really vague yeah. and I'm like no if you were in the situation there would be a lot of detail attached to the situation you know there's you gotta remember every I, a finite is that, is that the word? Yeah. Like every you time slows down. Take you, everything. Yes, in. you're gonna remember. You even it know the smells. Like on, yeah. Yes, you know. You remember the smells. Smells, like, big smells one. hit yeah. me, and sometimes like it just gives me goosebumps right now. You see, you hit a certain smell, instantly hits you, and you're back there. Like you know everything that's gonna go on. And and when he was telling him here, I was just like, this. I, I'm getting the vibes that it's not real. But then the next day is when it really hit me that it wasn't. But when it like. For real, for real wasn't is when I went out to DC to this 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 event that they held. There were some real people there that were actually pipe hitters, like legit pipe hitters at this event that were like real. But he went up and spoke. The stories right then, I turned to my wife and I like I said, This ain't it. I'm right when they left, I said all the stories that are that he's saying right now were were not even relatively close to the same thing that were even said on the podcast, like what, two months prior, a month prior? Not nothing was the same. Like, for instance, could you hop over a wall? And shoot a tank instantly with a javelin. No, it's not possible. Javelin takes a long time to get. Javelin out. takes a long time. And not jumping over a wall with it. By what, did I, what did I tell you? You can't go over a wall with a javelin and hit a tank instantly. And you can't even pre-prepare. One, there's no, there was no, there was no, and what doesn't, what other than add up, there was no tanks in that whole situation. They're all BMPs. There was not a single tank in any of those firefights that he's in. Not a single one. Right. So you can't call, and if you're really skilled and not LARPing, you're not going to call a tank a BMP. Yeah. Yeah, you like it. You know what I mean? You yeah, look at yeah, it, it, it's kind of like saying in the, in, the, in the military, you don't call something a gun. You know. You will get your absolute fing dick crushed if I said, hey, can you hand me my gun? What the fuck's a gun? It's not, it's not, a, it's a rifle. You got a rifle and you got a machine gun. Yeah, you got a machine gun. There's two different things. You used to do that at one of the training institutions. If you called a rifle a gun, they'd make you go get one of the old, like, um, 105 mils and you, you, like, section it to pull it around. Yeah, did you, yeah. you, you, you want a gun? That's how about you grab one of the fucking... Yeah, see uh, that thing on the price yeah, square? Yeah, the yeah, but how about that big that's thing? A with, that's a gun over there. Yeah. That is a rifle, you dumb motherfucker. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. God, I'm new. Calm down. Yeah. yeah, God bless. So if you guys are hanging out right now not using Express BPM, you guys are absolutely crazy. It's like going to the casino and, and only being able to play like maybe the slot machines. No one wants to do that. So why limit yourself like that? That's, not, that's crazy. Why would you guys do that? I'm telling you guys, I use it a lot. I use it every single day, actually. Matter of fact, when we're overseas, my wife uses it significantly. It lets you change your location, control where you guys are actually watching, like Netflix and other streaming websites. So if you want to watch something, say when you're in a Belgium, you can only watch in the States, which is a thing. When he's over there in Aussie land, he, guess what? He can only watch certain things in Aussie land we can't see here. So guess what he can do? Flip on ExpressVPN. He is absolutely, he's set. He's good to go. All you gotta do is open up the app, you select the country you guys are gonna go to, tap it with one button, that's easy. One button, connect, and then right there, refresh the page, and it's done. It's there, it's easy. It's super easy. And why do you guys want to choose ExpressVPN over everybody else? Hey, I got you. Blazing fast speed, streaming HD with zero buffering, compatible on all devices, phones, laptops, media consoles, smart TVs, and more. They have 94 different servers in different countries. So you gain access to thousands of new shows. It works with every single service, BBC, iPlayer, YouTube, and more. So be really smart. Stop paying full price for streaming services and only getting access to a fraction of the content. Get your money's worth with expressvpn.com forward slash Rob. Don't forget to use my link at the very top of the description. Go to expressvpn.com forward slash Rob to get extra three months for free on ExpressVPN. Hey, go check them out. The link is very job description. Thank you so much for ExpressVPN for sponsoring this episode. Now I would actually stem this conversation. I'm not one, like I said, I've been holding on to this for about a Eight, nine months now. Ever since I came back to from that DC event. I'm sure they, they'll, probably get, they'll probably get a text from them or whatnot. It's, it's not me going out here trying to, to destroy their name or any type of it. I mean, you go on Twitter, you guys can go look at it. I mean, there's a there's a very long... Have you seen this receipt? Yeah, the receipt at the, the receipt hotel for the JD and Coke service. And the reason why I'm coming out and saying this. For one, I, I think the guy may have an alcohol issue, which is, which is, okay, you know what? That happens. I get it. Just go, just go get it seen. It's not a big deal. It happens to everybody. Well, not everybody, but it happens to a lot of people. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy. it's easy to get kind of under that. But the big thing here is, what were the funds actually being used for? That is my question. Because I even personally gave five grand to the whole thing. This was years ago, or no, about a year ago. You guys, I told you guys, I put my trust in, 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 in this whole thing. And I told you, hey, go ahead and give them a donation. I think we raised like a hundred some thousand dollars. That's mm -hmm. not a I, I, I Through this, through this platform, yeah. we raised like a hundred twenty, hundred thirty thousand dollars 
for us for this whole cause. And when I see stuff like this, which you guys can see on screen, it makes me a little concerned. Granted, it says 4,560, which I know this is not in U.S. dollars. Mm. Which What's the conversion rate on this, by the way? I think $30 is 1000 Okay. So, so that's I mean, just a tab. But. It's just a tab. It's not like a crazy tab. You're looking at, what, 120 bucks, which is not crazy, but look at all the jack and cokes it is. Yeah. But, but at the end of the day, if a cent of money donated isn't going to the place it should be, that's where the problem is. That's begin. the problem is. And it, it doesn't matter the amount. It, it's... Yes, it does. Yeah. And we're like the hotel rooms, all this. Like, I understand things need to be That's looked fine. after, but, you know, he's not the only one doing it. There are a lot of people, especially in the beginning, who were absolutely fraudulent with funds. Absolutely. And I, and I don't really... I know it sounds, it sounds really terrible me saying this, but there's a lot of stuff that I just never really could get on board with as well, with that with the whole group. So that's why the other reason why we have another gentleman who's been hanging out, Laviv. That's the one that kills me the most. I got a photo of him, um, Nance... He had his magazine in Upside Down. That's, that's not even a joke. Like, I, I think I actually screenshot it and sent it to Matt Best as a joke. Like, yo, look at this. What is this? And Matt Best was like, what the... I mean, if you guys don't know who Matt Best is, do you know who Matt Best is? Yeah. Everybody yeah. knows Matt, I, Matt Best. I mean, that's that's what I'm talking about. It's like, I, I got access to actual, like, real pipe hitters. And so we see stuff like this. It's kind of like, are these guys playing, like... We, we're not. This isn't, like, a chance to play Airsoft. And that's the one I kind of... I, I look at this... And it's not just him, because there was another guy I was talking to, uh, Ryan O'Leary. You know him? I think it's Ryan mm. O'Leary. You know Ryan O'Leary? Yeah, I know the name. At least. Uh, what's that? I know, you the, know name. the name. So yeah. I was talking to him. And that's Oh, yeah, Ryan O'Leary right here. So this was one of the guys I was trying to get over here. So he's actually staying in Ukraine till the end of the war. He's not just there like to take photos and stuff like that. He's actually doing stuff. Um, but he's the one that was actually posting stuff out the gate, and now he's been blocked by all of them. But he's been actually physically posting. And this is what kind of like stemmed me. I don't know if this guy was going off the cliff. Do you see like stuff like this? Like James told him he needs to delete his account. He should yeah. delete because he has sent so much hate this way. It's just a kind of a weird situation. I really hope that. <sighs> well, James's name became like synonymous throughout the networks there of like, hey, this guy's full of shit. Um, now I can't verify if he is or isn't. I never had any personal dealings with him. But like I knew his name and I was like, hmm. Right. And some other people I knew, like yourself, whatever, were, you know, there was a lot of bad news coming out. And a lot, And I'm suspicious around a lot of these a lot of these Westerners going there who I'm like, well, what are you doing? Like you're posting online, you're doing all this. There's things that could be geolocated. Like these geolocation guys online are unbelievable, man. Like within five minutes, they can pick exactly where that is. And there's videos going up of, you know, making drones and weapons and stuff where it's like, oh, this is sketchy. And every time, because I followed James, um, <clears throat> I'd see in the, like always in the comments, people trying to call him out on things. Um, but it's not just him. There's a lot, there's a lot of it, especially in the beginning, man, there was a lot of guys there for not the right reasons. And it was really detrimental to the whole, the whole effort. Oh, anyway, yeah, I actually got on, I got on this guy's Twitter, not to like roast him or anything, just cause he, I found that photo and excuse me, his magazine wasn't upside down. It just wasn't inserted properly on his AK. So you know how you have to get the lip in there? First, mm. and leap of the under. Yeah, well, he went. Yeah. He went the other way, so it, it will stay in there. But when you, he didn't It'll take. Just be hanging the front. Just hanging up front. Yeah, so what it was, and I was. I sent it over to Matt Best. He's like, God bless. I have no idea how America got as far as we did with guys like this. Anyway, now he actually did post something about it though. He said that uh, James was not fake and was troubled. He didn't. He did a lot for Ukraine, but he challenges his face. The so same thing. Like I said, you can have an alcohol problem or whatever. You can have other problems. It's not a big deal. Don't don't be shy. But I've actually said publicly, I was an alcoholic when I came back from Afghanistan. I was. Mm. I was absolutely troubled. Like like. Like crazy, but what I'm, what I'm, some of the stuff I'm, I'm going to actually be honest about was we were riding back in the truck one time and we were talking about Charles was probably in the back seat because we just went and shot pigs out of a helicopter and he said something to me about, uh, I was trying to like, because after we had done the interview, wow. I really wanted to poke and prod a little bit more about, I, I, I didn't want to say, hey, can I see your DD-214? Yeah. I wanted to straight up say, hey, let me see this because this is tough. Just nothing, nothing was really adding up to me. It, he could have, yeah, for sure, yeah, he could have been in the military. I would have, I've never, never once have I ever asked or anybody's really asked to see DD-214 from him. Which That's like that enlistment is? papers. Enlistment papers. Yeah. So it tells you everything you've done. So literally everything you've done from the beginning right. to the end. So it's fine. I mean, I'm never going to ask that. It's kind of a weird question to ask somebody. So instead of doing that, you poke and prod and you just ask questions like, when were you in? Where were you at? What years were you in? And that's when it started like popping up, like, like those light balls were going. I was like, oh man, some of those things do not not line up ever right. and dates weren't really aligning and then also the biggest thing for okay for one if you're in the military you don't wear your boots out ever like yeah. i'm not gonna wear my i mean only privates do 
it. When you don't have enough money to buy other tennis shoes, you know, yeah. hey, I'm going to wear my issued boots. Yeah. I'm not going to wear my issued boots out. I'm not going to wear dog tags. I'm not going to wear my dog tags hanging out my fucking shirt. I'm not going to wear like camo pants everywhere. It's just, it's just very strange. That I, okay, you know what? That might be a style. I didn't really care. Just you know, brush it. Up. It's like one of those things. I was like, oh, whatever. Let's put it aside. It's not a big deal. The big thing I was like, oh, bullshit, was when he told me that he got out as an E5. Which is fine. I got out as an E5 as well, which is great. You can get out. But then they begged him to come back in, and they gave him his E6. One million percent never happened. Right. That right there is something that could never happen in a million years. I don't care what people say. There's, there's no way you're going to get out of the military and then come back in as an E6. Okay. And the other thing he was trying to, like, okay, you could be a tanker. That's fine. You can be a tanker. I know a lot of tankers. That's great. But there's not a fucking thing in this world called a, a sniper tanker. All right. You, <laughs> what? They, okay. Well, this is a, this, hold on. This is a whole, this is a whole nother ballpark. <laughs> like I didn't, I didn't, he didn't know anything about me. Just so everybody's aware. He had no idea what my background was. He didn't know what I had done, what I had been, where I had been, what years I was in, what units I was with, who I was attached to. He, I didn't, I, we didn't go down the whole ballpark. So I just let him talk. You know, just let, let, yeah. let, let, let him think. Yeah. And then he started talking to me that he was a sniper and he had like uh, a couple hundred kills. And I, I was a, it, the whole thing, like he a had a couple no, of hundred kills. This is in Iraq. And all was he the white? I do. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not even, I'm not like, I know I have no credit. I have nothing to like say, Oh my God, this is all recorded, but I'm just being yeah. honest. Like, you know, I'm just saying like, it was, it was one of those things I had never said what I had done. And then after all this, yeah, I was in for a little bit. I was in for seven. I was, I was a sniper which is kind of funny because I got that photo over there, which is I showed you, Willie, just to give you some actual proof. You know, it's kind of what, what Willie said before the podcast we started. Everybody, it's going to be very difficult for you to prove anything that ever happened to anybody. Say right now, if you were to say, hey, I know a Vietnam veteran, everybody's mind's going to pop to you. Wow, that, that bitch has been through some shit in the swamps, in the mud, in the bugs, all the fucked up stuff you could possibly think of. When in fact, he may have been a paper pusher. He may have been literally a cook and not done anything at all. That's just the way this, this goes. Same thing with Iraq. A lot of people think, oh my God, you've been in Iraq. Thank you for your service. We'll follow it up with the next question. What was your MOS? What did you do? What did you do specifically? What years were you in there? You know, Experiences may experiences vary. vary. But that's not to take away from anyone's service. No, like, no, no, no. At the no, end no. of the day, if you went to Iraq as a postman or Iraq as Nothing like, I'm a just, SEAL guy, it, it doesn't matter. Still, yeah, it's, it's, what, it's, either way, it's awesome, but... If There's, you're portraying yourself, when you're portraying online, it's very different. And yeah. I don't, and I, and I, and I hope I don't portray myself as being anything that I'm not. I'm very honest in what I've done, and a lot of people know what I've done, which I'm fine with. I, I sometimes I make jokes. I've made this joke many of times, especially when someone starts piping off. Um, I think Charles maybe heard to say this before. I've killed men with bigger balls than you. I have said this to another person before, and that's that's a true true statement. If you think about it, if you think about it. Yeah. The Taliban they have huge nuts for what they were doing. So when I say, yeah, I've killed men with bigger balls than you. It's not me. It's not me boasting. It's literally me being honest. It's mm. the truth, and I have stories. I actually have stuff I can back it up with. I have actual physical documentation. If I had to actually say from my from awards that were given or put in for that's happened. So that's the kind of stuff when you guys look at stuff. And I feel really naive about it. But what am I going to say after 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 all it's came out? I feel I feel like a weight's been lifted off my chest now because I'm be like I've been holding on this for like a year. Like I know what isn't real and what isn't real. Yeah. But most people they can't see that because they're just they have no actual on the ground experience with anything. So they look at somebody like, Oh, they're so hyper-focused on the, the current situation that's going on. They just see hero. Everybody's a fucking hero, which we know there's some badass hero Americans that are actually over there. Like, um, uh, what's that one guy? Oh my God. I can actually text him right now. This dude is a badass. It was an actual, let me go to my, I gotta, actually, does he want do I want to pull him up? Yuri. Oh, Yuri. Yuri. I just had Yuri on my podcast. Yuri's, Yuri's a legend. Yuri's a real guy. But he prepped for 10, 15 years for that war. Yuri's a real... So 2008, he yes. started moving things to Ukraine because he was like, hey, this is going to pop off. Guys, and He like, started yeah, moving yeah. stuff in and like, there's GoPro footage of him getting hit by an AT mine on a Humvee. Like, it's, there's no bullshit there. But then you speak to Yuri, because I've spoken to some guys who, you know, I, I question some stories. But then you speak to a guy like Yuri and he's not all flamboyant out there and all these, oh. he's like just only like oh it's like you know your experience would be i guess very similar to mine the harder the dude you speak to like the the more he done the less sort of glamorous it is like you know i have some very dear friends of mine who did 20 plus years in the sas or sasr and you speak to them and it's like oh you know i did some stuff and that was you know it's fun it was here and there and then you speak to some guys who are trying to prove themselves that you know private soldier sort of thing and it's like you know i was here i did this and you're like oh right okay so 
I'm always cautious of anyone who's like out the gate, like, hey, this, this, this. It's like always pull back a little bit. Well, I feel, I mean, I, I feel real stupid. I mean, I didn't, I didn't really know how to go about it. I just kind of let it be. Um, I, I kind of, I, I kind of feel good about it now though. Cause I mean, I'm not going to get in trouble for, for mentioning this out loud. I didn't, I mean, it just, I, I, you go on Twitter right now and you actually click type in the name and it's just, it's just kind of crazy stuff. He got called out by Sarah, Sarah Ashton. She the one that got hit. In the What's front. that? Yeah. She the one that got hit in the front. Yeah. yeah. Um, Sarah Ashton Cirillo, Cirillo. She's the one that actually called him out. Okay, if you don't know who it is, that she's been over there for the entire time, for the most the entire time, right? Probably Probably she just got hit yeah. like what two weeks ago, or three weeks ago. Yeah. Or like yeah. Anyway, but the thing is, it's coming from both sides. It's coming yeah. from pro-Ukrainian sources and Russian sources, and it's giving the Russian sources a lot of ammunition against. You know, I'm reading a lot of stuff that's like, hey, but this is just. You know everything else about this is a fraud and fake as well. It makes so it makes it makes everything that's happening over there f- makes it look like a disgrace. Yeah, it makes it all look like a f- disgrace. Well, that's one of the big draw cards people will pull up about Ukraine is the amount of corruption and fraud. Dude, and that's what, what and, I'm talking about. That's why I want. That's and, what I want to talk about this. And don't get it wrong, like that. That you know, Ukraine has had a bad history of corruption, and you know, it's some of it's getting. Look, look at the amount of people Zelensky's laid off. Like, look, you know, look what. The- we were just talking about yesterday. Yeah. We were just talking about the amount of ammunition they're going to have and stuff like this. This is the kind of thing where you can be like, there is a lot of fraud that's been going on mm. inside of Ukraine. And you can literally, this story is going to pop up number one now. Yeah. It's one of the things that's going to pop up. Oh, fuck. You guys remember this guy that was taking in, were they taking like $3 million worth of mm. donations or something? I don't really know. Are, what are they accounted for? Is yeah. it really tough? And then the other question I kept seeing pop up over the last, I think the last month, um, I didn't look too much into it because I'm not good with legal stuff and I didn't want to get involved. I didn't want to, but I guess they were an LLC or something. They were, they weren't a 501C at, at some time. Is that like a non-for-profit or for-profit? Yes. Right. So you have two different forms. So yeah. one was an LLC and I didn't, I didn't, I kept sawing him. He kept having to um, like, like address it. Right. And I was like, man, what is this talking about? What, what are they talking about here? And I didn't want to get involved. Like I yeah. said, I stay out of it. I stay way out of it. But I want to say right now, the guy that is in charge of it, the guy Rip, I will say, nice guy. I don't think he had anything. I think he just got tied in. Maybe I do like him. I'm not gonna lie. Right. There's nothing wrong with him at all. Um, but Jesus, well, the stuff that's going on. It's just like kind of like when you you get trouble by association type deal. I think yeah. that's exactly what's going on here. And I kind of feel that, bad man. for him. What's that? There's a lot of that. There's yeah. there's a lot of people with their heart, mind in the right place. And there's a lot of people. And I see this because I've done a lot of charity work before for cancer stuff. There's a lot of people who start with the best intentions and a lot of veteran charities like this. A lot of veteran organisations start with the best intentions but then once that money starts, you know, sort of hits their eyes and they start seeing it, it all goes off course from there and sadly that happens in a lot of these sort of non-profits and I'm not saying that one specifically because I, I can't back up anything on that but it happens all the time. People start in the right place and, you know, money, money is the root of all evil for... For a lot of things, especially bloody charities, especially when like where, who's tracing that, who's backing up where it actually went, realistically, for all of this, and maybe not all that, maybe they're in the spotlight, but there's a hell of a lot of NGOs. This same one I was talking about before, we knew that they had left the country, and then they were on an interview with I believe it was CNN, and we knew that they were not in Ukraine anymore, and in the interview he's wearing his body armor in Poland on the like live cross in his room wearing his armor which is like a blank background and we all knew like these guys aren't here like they left and it's 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 very disappointing man when you're like they're doing it trying to gain you know support for what you're doing or whatever and they're these ones who are getting a lot of traction just because they are the most showy and you're like that's just just bs and i knew a lot of guys pulling out landmines who are doing fantastic work. What was that guy's name? Ryan, Ryan Henrickson, Ryan Henrickson yeah, ex Green Beret. Green Beret. You know, just went over there by himself, pulling out landmines, doing whatever, staying in the cheapest accommodation possible, living out in a sleeping bag with soldiers and stuff, pulling out landmines, doing legitimate. And I don't even care where you land on this war. Like, I don't care if you're the most pro you're going to pro Russian person. Landmines are a terrible thing because the most likely thing to step on a landmine is. Some woman or kid yeah, walking, it's not, it's not, it's walking not out us. the field. It's, it's not no, soldiers. It's not, it's not a soldier. They know because the soldiers it's, are gonna they're gonna walk it's in there. Area just, denied. Yeah. That's all it does is deny that area yeah. for and those as like Soviet era the mines are well built. That a lot of them will last a hundred years in the ground, and 
you know, and guys like this are trying to, you know, really give back and not getting the traction that these other ones are getting because they're not as showy online. They're not standing in front of a tank saying, I killed this, blah, 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 with a gun. You know, Ryan might, oh, look, this is a landmine. I put this key in. That scared the shit out of me, that video. If you can find that. Let me show you guys a sound that I just never get used to. All right, keys inserted. I hate that sound. I dream about this sound. The spring decompressing sucks. There's a video, so an anti-tank mine, you've got like a key that goes to the mm. top, like unwind it, yeah. but then you hear it like spool. Yeah. F that. Like, <laughs> like, like, no, I don't want to be anywhere near explosive, uh. start making noise. But guys like that, um, and Swampy's crew and whatever, who are doing good work, just don't get the, the recognition or the support they maybe should because they're not as, not as flashy, not as showy. It's... It's a pity, man, and it really takes away from everything. I I don't know. I I feel I, I feel good about myself now. I've been as long hold, as you feel better. I've I've been hold, I've been holding on to that for like eight months. After I went to that that DC event, I remember I came back and I told you this bullshit stories don't align. Nothing makes sense. Nothing lines up. I got to detach myself from this one hundred percent. I did. I never even never con. I was out of it. I was out. I was. I'm done with this. Dropped everything. Once I found out, and I was like, man, I don't want to. That's why I literally detached myself from the situation completely, which I was right. Feel good about it. Thank God. Get off your chest. Thank God. Oh. Shit through the border, and it was like nothing. Oh, I didn't even talk about that. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah, I, was I, I wasn't there for that. Right. What's that? Like, I, so I, I, like, I, you know what? Come here, come here, come here. You know, hold on. I'm gonna, actually, here, you come on. My camera guy, you want to talk? You want to talk? You want, you want, you want. <laughs> oh, okay, no, but I'll just sit down. I'll sit down. Yeah, I don't wait. So my camera guy, we sent him. We sent him to Ukraine, and now nah, when you guys remember, we went over there and they went across the border with him. And I, and I know, I know how awkward that was. I heard those stories. I didn't even talk about those. Thank God I never talked about those. That was awkward. And like for me, I even cringed. And I was what three thousand miles away, <laughs> you know. And it was summertime here, and I was enjoying the nice sit by the pool. And you're over there just trying to get after it, but. My God, did you ever meet any more? I know there's a lot of good Americans that be yeah, doing. There's, there's the uh, there's the Asian SF guy. I can't remember his name right now. I think it's oh, yeah, he's yeah. I What's know. his name? I can't remember his name. I follow him on Instagram. He's he's yeah, he's, he's a beast. Yeah, he's he's a he's an, I think he's actually a, uh, I say I think he's actually he's South, South Korean. Korean. South he's Korean. South Korean SF. Absolutely, my God. Yeah, I would like to shake that guy's hand. That guy's a, that guy's a beast. But his the guy that I'm talking about was actually attached to one of the guys that I called a pipe hitter over there. Right. I met his buddy. Which they were actually connected. I think it's Rob Lee. Yeah, I know Rob Lee. No, it's not Rob Lee. Rob Lee's a different guy. My God, let me get them all mixed up. Doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. Anyway, this guy that I talked to over there, he was like an actual legit sniper. Had actually done some stuff. When you're talking to him, you can have, you can have an understanding. Oh, this guy is. Mm. You know, you, you know, this guy is real. And I felt kind of bad for him because he was being stuck next to this gentleman inside this this conference room. And I was like, God bless. This guy knows. Yeah. But he can't say anything. This guy knows. 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 If we're both sitting here and we both have done the same kind of stuff, you don't look at this and be like, oh, you know, that's a that's a real good story. You know, that's a that's a believable run that there. You know, you, you bounced up over that wall. You hit that tank that was a BMP with a, a javelin that takes like 45 seconds at minimum to lock on and you hit it that quick. Boom. Got out of there. The only thing you remember was a was a dog being chased by a chicken. You don't remember shooting anything, shooting at anybody. Like that's, that's, what, you, that's what you remember is a dog being chased by a chicken. Hey, some of those stories are the best ones. Where it's like, hey, there's this dog getting chased. What, <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you talking about? The dog. Who the loosest the... stories are the best. The but ones that, that are just like, the hell, where does dog come from? Yeah. The hell are you talking about the dog? Nobody cares about the damn dog. What about everything else that's going on? Uh, I feel good now. Man, good. one of the ones I remember, and it wasn't actually me in the story. It was one of my very close mates, ex-SF guy, but he was running security over there. So it was you know, nothing to do with anything there. It was just security for a team. But he rolled out with a crew. And he was like, man, roll out with them. And they're like, yeah, we're going here. And he's like, oh, fuck, that looks pretty, like, that's right on, like, the red zone. And he's like, all they did is they just had, like, a Ukrainian flag on the dashboard. And he's like, they'll just go around all the checkpoints, just just out around and back on. And he was in the back of the car, like, these guys must know what they're doing. Like, and then he started switching on, like, I don't think these guys actually, <laughs> he's like, oh, fuck, I don't, I'm not really that comfortable. And then this guy's experienced as fuck. And he's like, next thing, we're passing tanks. And he's like, what's not if you're passing a tank, that's not a good sign. And like one fires and the windscreen gets blown out. <laughs> and he's sitting there, he said, I'm in the back, eating my pants. And next thing there's just like artillery everywhere, whatever. 
they go and then they eventually turn around. He's like, we need to get out. Like, he's like, I had to take control. We got out. We get stopped at this area because it's just arty. And ended up in the back of a BMP because these guys like, you need to get in. Like, we're getting arty. And he's like, these guys were just like, had no understanding of how dangerous artillery actually is. Like, you had the windscreen cracked and blown from the percussion off a tank because you're in front of a Ukrainian tank. That's not a good place to be. And they're on the map going, we're getting people from here, we need to extract like these people. And apparently a Ukrainian soldier like, looked at my mate and was like, that, that village doesn't exist, like that's gone now. This was pretty early on in the war. And same thing, he did a bit of digging and he, got a, he hit up a mate in the US to pull a friend of information. And this guy did like three weeks in like basic training and it was like, this whole team was full. But he said he'll never forget coming through like the last checkpoint and they put on the A-Team theme song. And my mate's in the back thinking like, what the fuck is going on? And he was telling me all this, like over a beer, just pissing ourselves laughing. Like, dude, this is a meme. Like people won't believe that there's actually guys like this full of it. And they're try- and I'm, they, their hearts were in the right place. But the things they were doing and capable of, you like, that's just wrong. But then from that, you know, mission success, rescuing people, doing this, doing that. And he's like, and as well, this team that raised, it was like $1.7 million. They delivered like a box of like gloves, like not like, you know, you know, mechanics gloves or good gloves. They were just like, that is like whatever that be like spec ops brand or something is like just a cheap thing of gloves. And that was it. Out of a million dollars, a million dollars goes up. Bloody a million dollars goes a long way in America or Australia. A million dollars goes a long way in Eastern Europe. And it's just, it's so disappointing that these are people that take advantage of situations like this. But there always has been and there always will be. People will take advantage of things like this. If you wanted, if you wanted to make a million dollars, wait for a water pop off and then say you're doing the best humanitarian stuff there because in six months people forget the person's name of who did dodgy stuff and that'd be it. I, I you were sitting there talking to you and my thought process was I've been sitting here making fun of Wagner and all the goofy stuff they do. And then we got our own version of that happening. Literally. I, I know I would really want to know. I just want to see it. I, I, I'm not saying he didn't serve inside the U S military. That's not what I'm saying. I just would like to see DD two fourteen. Hmm. It's a very simple thing to ask. Cause you can, you can black out your name and your social when nothing else really matters. Just yeah. years, times you served, where you deployed at. I'm just really kind of curious myself. But you know this, point. the army attracts, like the military attracts a lot of people who are, like you, every every platoon has like that one guy who's like an impulsive bullshit. Oh my God. Always. We had some dude who's like, yeah, my dad is the captain of like a US, like a US submarine. And we're like, what the f***? <laughs> like we're <laughs> like, what? And this dude, man, was known for just being like absolutely full of it. So- it might be the same, and let me know. The fir- when you first get to your unit, once you come out of like basic tra- or like your infantry training, or whatever, and you go to your unit, the first guy to try and strike a conversation with you, he's the guy that has no mates, and he's like the soldier of the battalion. Try and it's always that the first guy who approaches you, right, yeah. stay away from, stay that. away from, just he's get run away, just go out. Just run and away. he was the first, guy. and within like a few minutes, one of the other like senior product, senior diggers comes over, he's like Willie, like hey mate, like that you'll learn about this bloke. And he had all these stories about like, I had a million dollars, but it's in a crypto wallet, which I've lost the password to and all this. But like that happens, but not this, not on an an infantryman's wage of 50 grand a year. Like that's not happening. And my dad's a captain of this submarine and all this just bullshit, nothing lined up. It was so ridiculous, the stories, man. It just kept getting better and better. And next thing he's on, it's called like AZMI or something, which is like calling out um, like, in the, in the military um what do they call that um stolen valor and we were sitting in the lunchroom at work as this guy like came up on this of all this he claimed of like all these trips to afghan killing people in special forces work and we're like he's in my battalion like we know that dude like he did none of that um and it must have been one of the other boys like you know wrote up this shit. but it, it, the army is not immune to that at all if anything the army attracts very interesting people. It attracts the best people and the absolute worst as well. And you'll see that. You go to a random infantry unit, you'll have the best guys ever and on the other end, just the shit is like impulsive liars. It's, it's very disappointing because I know when I first like, got to the army, I'm like, oh, this is like really elite. Like this would be the best of the best. Like it, it's so hard to get accepted and all this shit. And then you meet someone in the bunk next to you and you're like, how, how the fuck did you get here? Um, 
but everyone has it, man. Everyone has, everyone has that one guy which is infamous for, you know, going out in the town and telling all these chicks that I was doing this, I was doing that, I was a, you know, SAS Mando, Delta Force. You're like, what the f-? Like, dude, you're getting roasted in the fucking first parade next to me yesterday. Like, yeah, it's a, it's a funny one. No, I just... <sighs> you know, it just went down my head when you're sitting talking about, like, frauds or whatever we're talking about. You know, you know when you're having this conversation, I'm, I'm, I'm all over the place. You know what my thought was when you are just talking about that? I was listening to you, of course. Why wouldn't I be listening to you? <laughs> what does a cockpit look like inside of a submarine? <laughs> <laughs> that is literally what my why went to, and I sat here just thought... Man, they're underwater. I wonder if it's like an airplane cockpit, and I need to look it up. Bro, I'm always like... I just randomly sort of... Uh, randomly, and this is... Everyone knows to listen to this. I go off topic all the time. But I always think with like the US, like the commanders of UF subs with like the nukes on board, I'm like, how would it feel to be that guy who could end the world? Like, when I carry like 20 nuclear bombs or something, like ICBMs, that guy could just end the world. Like, I know it's probably not that simple with the codes, and but at some point, if you had some pact and you and the XO... You have the you in charge of something that could end humanity. Like I don't know if that's scary or awesome. Yeah. No. What do you mean? That's I'm, what I expected to look like. Well, you're not going to have a windscreen and a joystick. Like, well, that that's like a commercial sub. <laughs> that but, one's got a windscreen and a joystick. <laughs> this is actually what it looks like. That looks miserable. That would actually give me a little anxiety. You're down there just floating around at the bottom. You're in a tin can at a few hundred meters deep for months. Yeah. No. People always go submarine as a paid one. You're like, not well enough. No. Not for that shit. Now I'm going to see inside of a submarine. Now my mind is going down. What do the hallways look like? How bad do you smack your head on corners? Mm-hmm. Hallways in submarine. Little doors, little hallways, triple bunks, hot bunking. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Wow. I kind of feel good about it. I feel feel good. I, think, I feel, like, feel like my life has uh, taken a, a turn for the better. And I'm glad that everybody else is talking about it because I have nothing to do with this. So, like I said, I'm not, better. I'm, not, uh, I'm not going after the organization or anything to really anybody in general. I'm just kind of throwing it out there. I fell for it for about 30 minutes and then I brushed it off and never wanted to talk to it about it ever again. But now everybody else is bringing it up and it's all over. It's not just me. So, mm-hmm. I feel pretty good about it. But I remember I got called out once for not being in the military. Like yeah. someone, someone commented on the photo, like, this is fake. You were never in the military. And one of my mates who's a Victoria Cross recipient, you know, equivalent Medal of Honor, was the one that commented back. He's like, dude, I know Willie. <laughs> like, and I was like, yes, that's the guy who you want to get it done. Maybe I never did. Maybe I never served as full. Neither did you. All right. So the, the very last thing I'm actually going to touch on here is, is we were talking about frauds inside of Ukraine. It's not really directed at, at one person. He's talked about a few. Uh, like I said, the organization, I have no idea. I'm sure they're going to have to clean it up just a little bit. Maybe they, said they got mixed in with some bad bad apples or whatnot. I don't really care. But one of the things that actually I uh, always wanted to question was 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 inside the photos. Uh, you're standing you're standing in front of BMP, and his clothing himself is, is really clean, which doesn't really make any sense because if you align the story with what had happened, you were just in a massive firefight. You took out some tanks, which were BMPs. You did all this. You would think your knees would be a little bit dirty. Maybe your clothes would be a little bit dirty. And when I had saw the original video that went viral, I was like, okay, cool. This guy, clearly, my first thought was an infantry. Mm-hmm. Instantly. What hit me was the way that everything was set up. Yeah. Is it, a lot of people may look at it. A lot, of, a lot of y'all out there that there's a lot of videos you guys will see. You could probably pull some up Charles and Overlam. But like this kit is not set up correctly. Like if you want to look at somebody's kit, you'll know it. Hey, Charles, you could grab mine that's sitting over there. Now, the one that I have, actually, I have one that I use in Afghanistan. I still have it. It doesn't have plates in it anymore, of course, but this is the one I gave to Charles to take over there. So, I had, oh, it has plates in it right now? Oh, it doesn't really matter. When you look at somebody's kit, so here, here's a very good example. You guys see this? This is the one I use in Afghanistan. This one looks a little, a little rough around the edges, correct, or no? Kind of? It's still probably got Afghan dust inside of it. I bet you if I hit it hard enough, it'll, look at, oh! That's what I'm talking about. Don't tell the TSA that. That's the... <laughs> <I'm crazy. laughs> what do you mean? That right there. Yeah, don't tell cool. them. Cause an ecological disaster. Well, right <laughs> in my, my backyard. Anyway, this right here, this is how you have someone that knows what they're doing when it comes to kit set up. You see how flat it is. You know why you want to have something flat on your chest. You guys don't know this. You lay in the prone position quite a bit when you're inside of, well, a firefight. 
then guess what you don't want to be doing? You don't want to be like Humpty Dumpty rolling around, not getting a good sight picture. You want to be nice and flat. So when I look at people's kits, this is a very good example of a, I'll actually send this over to, to Charles. This is not a roast session, by the way. This is me just pointing out little details that I see that actually made my, my, my whole suspicion kind of line up. You look at this kit. That, 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 see the kit? Now, a question I've got on that. <clears throat> is those mags in upside down? Yes, hundred percent. That's yeah, the other thing. I, like, because you see the round in the top. You see the round coming out. So the reason, because there's another thing, a lot of people you guys won't that that were never in the military don't realize this. So the mags are in upside down. The mags, you don't put your mags with your your rounds facing up. For one, you're getting a lot of dirt and everything's gonna get inside of there. They're gonna get loose. They're gonna get jacked up. You put them in. Well, you grab it out. And you you grab it out in. and you go shook like this, and it goes in. When you put a mag. Because you don't just, in a firefight, you don't just take a mag and just dump it on the ground. You don't do that. Because you need that, you need that mag. Those things just, it's not like, it's not like Call of Duty where another magazine just mysteriously, mysteriously just disappear or reappears and your rounds are all reorganized. That's not the way it works. You, you take a mag that you just used and that one goes right side up. That one goes right side up. Or you put it in a dump pouch. But that one goes right side up so you know which one is empty. So you grab the one and it, and it literally goes in like this. You don't grab them and do the whole thing. It's not the way it goes. Not just that, but you don't have like a big bulging pouch in the middle. It's just, this is not the way it works. It goes mags nice and smooth. You might have an aid kit on the side and radio. That's pretty much what you need. You don't need a lot of those. streamlined. What's that? You don't want it wide. Yeah, you, don't want, you don't see nice Fitting and streamlined. Trays, fit, you, nice, through doors, nice clean, yeah. you can tell like vehicle mounted guys too. Like you need to be like. Vehicle mounted guys literally will have hard. nothing. Well, my when I was vehicle mounted, we just had it on the um, the clips and the Velcro. So we could it. take all take the mags off, sit at your feet. Yeah. There's a lot that goes into it, isn't it? And I feel like I'm like roasting, what am I, beating a dead horse here? I'm not trying to. I'm just, I'm trying to like give some more perspective onto why I came to this conclusion. That's why I stepped away. And I kind of feel good I can actually talk about it now since everybody else is talking about it. I'm sure I'll get a text about it. Maybe they'll try to sue me for defamation, which that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just pinpointing stuff that's actually out there. So, I mean, I guess you could sue anybody for defamation, Craig. Uh, it's, it's, it's more difficult than people think. Uh, if yeah. you're in the public eye too, like there's special privileges around people in the public eye. Like if I tried to sue you or you, me, it'd be like you've put yourself in the public image. Yeah. You're open to criticism. He's in the public image. You had 400,000 followers or something. Yeah. It's you getting done. Public image is very, if you're, if you're trying, if you're a public figure, it's very hard to do someone for it. Yeah, if that was the case, I probably would have tried to sue about 10 million people at this point in the last seven years for trying to come after me for something stupid. But I'm not going after him. Like I said, I'm not going after anything. I'm just trying to pinpoint some small little details in some of my backstories, which I didn't even touch on all of them because it's just not really the, not really it. I just wanted Willie to tell me some, and I told him a little bit. I think the important thing is just when you're giving up your money, like money is hard to come by. It's hard to earn money. Like make sure if you're donating money somewhere, I don't care if it's, Ukraine or a army veteran, you know, charity or a cancer charity or a kitchen, whatever it is, there are resources, and I'm sure the US has it, Australia has it, where if it is a non profit, like a um, proper non profit, they have to put online on a government website all their tax returns of all their, well, not tax, but like their earnings and spendings. You can see all of that. Do a little bit of research, and it doesn't take long. Do some research, see what their overheads are, see where their money's going. And, you know, put that money in places where it, where you are thinking it's going. Because if you're donating to, you know, X, um, the Cancer Council in Australia, for example, it's like 90% of the money they get is just goes into salaries and cars and all this other travel. It's bullshit. You think you're giving to kids with cancer. No, you're not. 90% of it is going there. You know, it's one cent is going in another way. So, and it's so important in every, all this, like, where you're putting your money, you're putting your faith, do a bit of research first because there are scumbags out there everywhere. I feel good about it. Well, I hope you guys did enjoy this episode. I'll see you guys tomorrow with another one. I know it's a little bit different. I feel good. Weight's off the shoulder. We're back on it. I'll see you guys.